couple more coaches next. We welcome up Caleb Williams and Kyle Miller. All right. Well, first, want to thank Kyle for a great football camp yesterday. Give him a hand. He and his dad, Mark, put on the best football camp. And my son, first time competing, it was just so cool to see this little seven-year-old, seven-and-a-half-year-old out there playing football. And at the end of the day, he said, there's a lot of running in football. He was really surprised by it. I was like, what do you think, buddy? <laughs> so I don't know if you sold him, but he had a good time. Uh, Kyle Miller from Elida, uh, five different NFL teams. And then you got to the point where you, you had to decide, you know, am I going to keep hoping that I get that chance in the NFL or do I go to coaching? How, does, how did that work through in your mind? Well, it, it may say, sound weird to say this, but luckily the decision was kind of made for me because I got injured. So um, I didn't really have to go through that. It was an easy decision to tra transition. Um, I think it made my mom and my wife happiest that they didn't have to worry about that anymore. So, um, yeah, the, it, it really made it a lot easier on me knowing that, hey, I hurt. I mean, I can't, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. And so, yeah, it made it a lot easier. As you look back now with a year and a half perspective, what will you remember about that tour of all the different states, all the different teams, uh, picking your, your son's been in what, four different states and he's three years old. Mm -hmm. What will you remember about that time? Um, I think it's the people we met. Um, I'm, I, I played for a lot of great coaches, a lot of bad coaches, <laughs> but I'll remember the great coaches. Um, I was in Miami for two years. That was the place I was the longest and that's where I have um, most of my friends that I still stay in contact with and we'll go visit them and they'll come visit us. So um, th those are the things I remember more than um, the on-field stuff and, and things like that. Kayla Williams, New Bremen graduate, went to Mount Vernon Nazarene, was at the University of Finley for a year as a grad assistant in men's basketball and now after one year at UNOH as the assistant, became the head coach uh, just as, as the season ended really at the end of this season. What was that whole process like for you, being at Finley, then UNOH, and then all of a sudden you know, you're 25 years old and you're the head coach? Yeah, it's, uh, one, it's a great blessing. It's something that, you know, there's nothing that I did that was, you know, made any of that happen. That was something that happened far outside of anything that I'm capable of. But, you know, the one thing that I just always try to do is, you know, at Finley, had an incredible experience there for two years learning under guys. You know, all the three of the guys that were on that staff with me have national championship rings. And so they, you know, learning from them, try to soak up as much as I can. And then came here with Coach Adams, who has coached for a, long, a lot of years. You know, different style, different way of coaching. You know, take what you like, take what you don't like. Um, and then just always try to be prepared, always try to be ready. Um, and that's something I've always tried to, to, to do is try to, you know, be the most prepared person uh, when I walk into a room and, well, if, you know, if I'm, you know, next November, I'm going to be coaching against Greg Tonegal, who's got, you know, three NAI national championships. So I have to work that much harder um, to be as prepared as him based on the things that he's accomplished. And so just trying to have that mindset and, you know, trying to have the mindset of, you know, work for the job that you want, um, not the job that you have. And so when even as a GA and then as an assistant, I was always trying to have the mindset of, okay, if I was running this program, what would I be doing? And it, and so trying to have that mindset, you know, coming, being in the, you know, growing up the son of a coach, you know, definitely helps. You just kind of naturally have that, mm -hmm. that mindset. So just try to be prepared and, uh, you know, try and, you know, a lot of blessing, though. That's the main thing is there's nothing that I did that allowed that to happen. It was just, you know, something out of my control. Growing up in New Bremen, did you ever think you'd be coaching at two schools kind of right in your backyard in Finley and UNOH? Uh, no, you know, you know, Finley, def you know, a destination, um, I think for me, yes, I always hoped I could be associated with such a strong program. And then, you know, my high school coach, Mike Ernst, you know, his brother, Charlie Ernst is the head coach. So, I, you know, I knew a lot about the program. Um, but then growing up, you know, at, at Northwestern Ohio here, UNOH, we've only had basketball for 10 years. So, you know, it wasn't even really on the radar. Um, and I actually, then I didn't even really know a lot about it until, you know, my first college game I ever played was on the floor yeah. uh, here at UNOH. So that was really the first association I ever had with it. And I never expected I'd be um, coaching here in Lima, but it's been a blessing. So I can't complain about it. And, and how'd that first game go? Uh, we won. We won in overtime. <laughs> I, I was a gangly freshman who was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So 
Uh, I think my first shot hit the side of the backboard, and I didn't play <laughs> any after that. So, but we won. So. So, so you're hoping the same thing happens, your first game yeah. coaching, the winning part. Hopefully. Not so hitting the side of the backboard. A lot of my guys are here, so just no shots off the side of the backboards. <laughs> that's all I ask. <laughs> uh, for both you guys, talking about recruiting, you know, we talked about it with, with the ladies earlier. Uh, you got a smile on your face, Kyle. I know you have a short answer. What, oh, man. what should guys put on their Twitter, their Snapchat, their Facebook, their Instagram? Nothing. Delete it. <laughs> Delete it. It does no, no good. No. No, nothing you put on social media will, will make us want to recruit you more. But there's a lot of things you can put on there that will, not, will, will keep us from recruiting you. Um, I mean, there, there's nothing good that can come from it. Um, and, and the only reason I have it is to check on you guys. If I could delete <laughs> mine tomorrow, I, I would do it in a heartbeat. Um, but I, I could talk about recruiting for hours. I mean, the, the people just don't understand um, – how simple it can be in, in all the money they pay people to try to give them exposure in, in things like, especially in football. I mean, my cousin's going to be a senior, and um, he's paying all these people to work out with, and I'm like, hey, I'm free, and I played in the NFL. So, um, I mean, it's, it's not as difficult as people make it. Um, I mean, it's just the, the things that we see that people would be amazed at. I mean, 17-minute highlight videos. I'll, I'm, I'm going to watch five plays. If I like you, I may watch five more. If I don't, I'm going to turn it off and never watch it again. So, um, I mean, we have to sort through hundreds and hundreds of kids. So, I mean, if, you're, if your best five plays aren't the first five of your highlight tape, then you're crazy because a coach may turn it off before he ever gets to those plays. Do you enjoy the recruiting process, getting to know kids, getting to know their families? Yeah, I do. I mean, I obviously enjoy coaching a lot more. Sure. Um, but n now that I'm at Mount Union, I enjoy recruiting a lot more. Um, <laughs> I, I got hired in February, and the next day I called a kid from Louisiana, and he recruited after 15 – or he committed after 15 minutes. Um, had never been in contact with a Mountain Union coach before that, but just based on all the championships we've won and playing on ESPN, he'd heard of us. Um, so that's not – to, to say anything bad about the previous places I, I coached, but um, it's just um, it's, it's a lot different. Um, Division three recruiting is completely different than, right. um, than the higher levels. We don't have scholarships to offer, so um, we're kind of sorting through, hoping that the kids we recruit don't get offered. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's fun to get to know kids, um, especially like some of the other people have talked about the, the good kids right. that – um, I mean, they're not putting the crazy stuff on social media. Those are the guys, and, and like they talked about, I mean, we'll recruit kids with high character over um, a, a great player any day because uh, character can, can tear a team apart. Um, so it's a lot more than just what you put on your film. Caleb, you have a, a smaller group that you can fill with your roster, basketball being smaller rosters, football. I mean, you guys have 150, 200, something like that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> What do you look for when, when you're recruiting a kid, when you're looking at social media? Yeah, I mean, social media, um, I, I'll just tell you a story. I was talking to, uh, this was last summer, uh, a D1 assistant, and we got on the topic of, of social media. Um, and at that level, and, you know, hopefully a lot of people in here strive to play at that level, um, you know, they have, they have a lot more staffing than maybe I do at, at an a, NAI and D3. So they got guys that their whole job is to go through and print out reports for the, for the coaches. This is what he posted last night and last week. I mean, and you're talking 20 tweets. And he, he showed me on his phone, you know, a report of what, of this, this prospect all there. So everyone up here has said it, but guys are going through it. Um, but it's also just the people you're interacting with. You know, I, 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 we at Finley two years ago, we stopped recruiting a kid uh, because there were, uh, several tweets in a row interacting with a guy that when we looked at his page you know was had pictures of things that we didn't want anyone in our program to be associated with so even though maybe he wasn't associated he was associating himself with the person and so we don't want that guy hanging around you know maybe he comes up to the weekend a couple of our guys stop over not knowing all of a sudden now we got guys in trouble so it's just even the people you associate with yourself on social media 
you have to be extremely careful. Yeah, so many times we'll hit click, you know, we'll tweet something or, or Snapchat or whatever, and we think, oh, you know, just our followers see it, just our friends, but it's out there. It's out there for everybody to see and go back and see. Uh, you think you delete it, but someone screenshotted it. It's, it's hard. It's hard to, to fathom that sometimes, but uh, we do. Faith, how does it drive you, Caleb? Uh, it's, it's essential. I think for me, it's, it's the calling. Uh, as much as you know, I want to have success as a coach. Um, you know, John Wooden has this quote where he says, you know, coach, it looks like you had a pretty successful season. You just won your so-and-so number national championship. And he goes, I don't know. I'll see in 20 years how successful we were based on the young man that we build. And, and so that's where, you know, the face side comes for me is really trying to pour into my guys. Yes, I want them to become better athletes. I want them to achieve all the things they want to do basketball-wise. But if they walk out of our program in four years or two years or however long they're with us and they aren't able to, you know, contribute to homes and build a family and, and work a job and, do the, and achieve the things that they want, then maybe we won some games, but how much did we really do? And so that's where I rely on the Lord a lot is that's, you know, not easy to do. Every, you know, you're dealing with... 15 different guys all have different personalities and different ways to get to them and 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 you're going through your own stuff you know how am I to tell someone else how to live their life when I'm just trying to figure out how to live mine and so and just trying to really lean on the Lord to help guide help give me the words you know when I'm talking with different guys um, and just help to kind of help keep me grounded in hopes that I can help you know mentor mentor our guys. Finally, Kyle, going back to Mount Union, you played there. Uh, as you mentioned, such a prestigious Division Three football program. What did it mean to get a job there and kind of you know, lay down some roots? This could be a place you're, you're at for a long time. Yeah, it was awesome. I mean, it, it was kind of the end goal for me and my wife. That's where we met, and we both graduated from there. And um, I, I really had no desire to ever coach Division I or, or maybe even Division Two, just based on um, the time commitment and the travel and stuff like that. I mean, um, we play a 10-game regular season. In, in this season, all 10 will be in Ohio. Wow. So, I mean, you, you can't beat that. And I recruit Western Ohio. So from Toledo down to, to Dayton is my recruiting area. So I'll come back and stay with my parents to recruit. So, I mean, the, the time that I'm going to be away from my kids, um, Division three, I knew was for me, and then in Division three, where's the best place to be? I mean, it's Mount Union, so um, I, I couldn't be happier to be there. Um, I was thinking about it last night. Since my son was born, we've moved eleven times. Wow. So um, to finally, we we moved into our house uh, about three weeks ago. Okay. So to finally be in a place that we expect to be there <laughs> longer than than six months or something is. Uh, I know my wife's probably happier than I am, but. <laughs> Um, it, it's definitely a blessing. It's good to be back around people we're familiar with. Um, one of my best friends uh, just bought a house two streets over. Um, my college roommate, um, his parents are, are, are right down the road. So um, a lot of famili familiarity and, and stuff like that. Just, I mean, it's, it's awesome to be back there. All right. Well, thank you guys, Kyle Miller and Caleb Williams.